Okay, welcome traders to this week's live analysis session with uh, me, Patrick Munley. Um, just before I get going here, can I just do a quick test of the audio and visual? If you can hear me and you can see um, my screen, if you could type a Y in the chat box, and I'll know that uh, we are good to go. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, before we get started with the charts today, a uh, quick reminder of the disclaimer. As always, the most important aspect of this disclaimer is that any of the views expressed here by me today are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, brief introduction to myself, for those who are here for the first time. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm and after a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time in my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling the S&P. And after some early beginner's luck, uh, racked up some pretty uh, solid gains. However, as is often the case, that beginner's luck ran out and I began to average down into what were ultimately to prove, uh, prove significant losing positions. I ultimately experienced a six figure hit to my personal capital. To say that was a gut wrenching and sobering experience is uh, an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it's feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months, to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, extensively back and forward testing and developing a, a rigorous risk management approach to underpin the strategy. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game and probably the most important watershed shift I made was moving from being a highly goal orientated individual who's focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I have to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have that professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading, simply being a numbers game in which you are playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm not concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades, because I know if I, focus on excellence in execution, then my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2013. Um, uh, sorry, since 2008, but since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, the uh, performance data you can see on the screen there. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also personally mentored over a hundred private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to uh, numerous brokers and training education brands, contributing um, written content, uh, webinars, live presentations on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management, and private mentoring, I'm also the resident market expert for Tickmill, providing uh, daily market analysis through uh, a, a note I issue each day, giving you a daily market outlook and the technical setups. And I also uh, provide uh, intraday chart analysis as well um, via their social media feeds on YouTube and Twitter. You can actually um, sign up to get the, uh, my daily market outlook delivered to your inbox um, through the Tickmill blog site. My other, uh, I guess, passion project is as head of trading and trader education 
We're a leading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. At FX Swap, we offer development and funding to retail trading talent. We don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And for those that are interested, uh, you can see here the number for the trading desk in London. There's also an email address there if you want to uh, drop the guys an email or, or, or a call. I'm sure they'll come back to you in a timely fashion with more information about what it is we're doing at FX Career Swap. So that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Now let's jump into uh, the charts. And what I would say is that I'm gonna cover a bunch of charts that I'm currently watching or that are on my radar with respect to potential opportunities. If at the end you have, if, if you have any questions as we go through, if you just wanna note those down and at the end I'll open up a brief Q and A session and I'll cover off any questions uh, that you guys might have. Or if you want me to take a look at a chart that I haven't uh, covered in the analysis. I'm happy to do that as well. So let's start with these equity markets, uh, the, the major indices, the S&P 500, the global benchmark really. And, um, and what we're seeing is a bit of weakness come through here now. Um, I did share a note in uh, on the trading floor with uh, with the guys at FX Career Swap. Uh, Bank of America, Merrill, uh, Bank of America, sorry, not Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, that was who they were. Um, Bank of America produced a, a research note suggesting that these last 10 days of March, often uh, we often see some weakness in, uh, in the equity markets. And, uh, and that looks like what's starting to feed through here. And I think we're going to produce now a, a three-way corrective pattern. Whilst we hold the highs here at 39.60, I'm now looking for a test of this ascending trendline support here, back down into the monthly pivot at 38.10. What I'll be watching for there is bullish reversal patterns on the daily or the four-hour time frame, set long positions, um, certainly looking for a retest of the prior highs here at, 40, at uh, just below 4,000. But ultimately, I'm looking for a move up now to test the top side of this ascending uh, trend line resistance at 4080. Now, if we don't put it, if we don't find support here at the 3810 area, uh, then I'd anticipate we're going to roll back down here and test into the 3730 area. So either way, there'll be opportunities there either on the break of this trend line support, or if we hold it, we put in a bullish reversal pattern, then, uh, then like I say, I'd be looking on the long side here with the S&P. Let's take a look at the DAX. <clears throat> the DAX continues to, uh, to trade really with a, a bullish tone here. We're seeing a bit of a pullback, but nothing significant. What I'd be looking for now is any move back into these prior highs here at the 14,140. 50 level, let's say, uh, watch for bullish reversal patterns there to set long positions. And I think uh, we can then see a move up certainly into this uh, 15,544 trend line resistance. But ultimately, I'd be looking uh, for this big ABC uh, pat pattern or equality objective to complete at the 16,815 level before we see any major corrective action in the DAX. The Nikkei 225, um, what have we got? Well, we've got this, uh, we've got an ABC pattern that hasn't quite completed. It will complete here at 28,078 is the equality objective versus the swing high here at 30,515. And if we can get a bullish reversal pattern from that zone, or even just below there at the ascending trend line support, that would be the third test of the trend line support. We've also got the weekly S3 and monthly projected range support at 27,400, let's say. So bullish reversal patterns in this zone, I think are an opportunity to do something on the long side in terms of the, uh, the Nikkei 225. And I'd be making a target certainly up through, uh, up into the ascending trend line resistance now at 32,480. So those are the areas I'm watching on the Nikkei. The dollar, this is the broad-based dollar index. Uh, weighted again, uh, sorry, trade uh, as a basket against six other currency pairs. And whilst we, uh, whilst we trade above this prior high at the 9248 level, I'd be looking for a test of ascending trend line resistance now, 9319. 
is the uh, is the level to watch there. Above there, we have the the yearly pivots coming in at ninety four fifteen. So if we if we get bearish reversal patterns on this uh, on this next test of the ascending trend line resistance, I think there's an opportunity on the short side in terms of the dollar. However, if we break through here and we don't take a pause, then I'm looking for a test of the uh, yearly pivot. And from there, I certainly anticipate uh, at least some profit taking to uh, to develop in the dollar uh, index. And I would anticipate we'll try that we put in some type of uh, potentially inverse head and shoulders type pattern here um, in the dollar. But for now, my focus is on this trend line resistance and I'll be watching for uh, bearish reversal patterns there to, um, to set short positions in the, uh, in the dollar index. And obviously then that feeds into the FX majors. We're going to walk through those at the moment. 10 year yields pulling back. Um, look now for a test of the ascending trend line support 150 level, 1.5%, uh, sorry. Uh, this is the 10-year yield chart. Obviously, the bonds trade inversely in terms of price. Uh, so I think we can see a, a correction here, and we'll see how we trade when we get into this uh, 150 zone uh, for the potential next leg higher to trade up towards 2% in terms of the 10-year yields. Gold, uh, like to, uh, to see gold break through uh, 1719 for a move down to test this major equality objective at 1653 and then from there i'd certainly be watching to see how we trade their bullish reversal patterns and i'd be looking to set long positions in gold this will complete a big corrective pattern in gold and would uh, will provide an opportunity i think for at least a 50 uh, percent retracement of this last leg down here let's just uh, get some idea in terms of targets so yeah that would take us back up into the 1800 level and I'd, so I'd be at a minimum, if we get the pattern um, to develop here, I'd be looking long for a three wave correction into that 1800 target is, uh, is what I'm watching there in gold. Silver, a bit more of a range environment for silver. We obviously had this uh, 30 handle to the upside. I'll be looking for another test now of support back down below the 22 level. Um, and if we can, well, we've got the yearly pivot coming in here, 2260. So I'd, uh, definitely be interested to see how we trade down into this zone here. Watch for bullish reversal patterns as, uh, as an opportunity on the long side. Crude, we've seen a bit of a, uh, a pullback. Uh, and then we saw the big snapback yesterday. Snapback yesterday was predominantly driven by the idea that uh, the Suez Canal is, uh, is going to be closed. And um, we're seeing a bit of chop trade here at the moment. What I'm looking for now um, in terms of crude would be a test of the 56 level. That's the weekly range support, the monthly range support, and it's also the monthly um, volume weighted average price. So 55.77 uh, is the area I'd be watching there. If we get down to that area, bullish reversal patterns um, would be an opportunity on the long side. But equally, what you've got to factor is um, if we don't make it uh, through there and we hold this 57.30 as support, um, we need to see a break back through yesterday's highs as a bullish confirmation. Um, but we could have the, the potential then for the wave four low to actually be in place. And then I'm um, looking for a move up into the 70 one level, the ascending trend line resistance here um, uh, to complete the, the pattern. So um, and if, if we do get follow through through yesterday's highs, then uh, that would be an opportunity on the long side. But if we can't get through yesterday's highs, then watch for this uh, 55.77 test. Copper, uh, going nowhere fast really. Um, since we completed that ABC corrective move, it looks like we're gonna come back down, maybe retest it here, the 390 level. Um, that should have been the uh, that should be the wave for low in place is what I'll uh, what I'd be looking for. But if um, if we are if we're to extend, if the correction is going to form a, a double now, uh, let me draw in where I think we uh, we could go to then. So as always, what I'm looking for is this uh, is the at a minimum is the equality objective. So if this is going to be our A low here, this is our B high. And we can actually see now that copper has the potential to trade down, maybe grind it out a bit here in, uh, in this type of pattern. So we get down back into these lows, correct. And then get that final leg into this 367 level. And then we should have a, a, a decent 
shot at having a wave four low in place and then we can expect this thing to uh, kick up through the prior highs on route to a, uh, a wave five objective likely up here into the uh, $4.70 level. So um, watching 367 there in terms of copper, if we take out these prior lows and watch for bullish reversal patterns to do something on the long side. This copper, that copper price action you'll see uh, fits with uh, some of these commodity currencies we'll look at shortly. Bitcoin, also under a bit of pressure now um, with the dollar strengthening. What I'm watching for, I have uh, one cash position that I've been running in Bitcoin since last October from the 10,950 level. Um, to, if I was going to add to that, what I'd want to see now is a test of support here back towards uh, 44,187, third test of the trend line. And if we can get a bullish reversal pattern from, the, from that area, then I'd be looking on the long side and ultimately uh, looking to target a move up into the 73,000 level as the next leg to the upside. So uh, that's the zone I'm paying attention to in terms of Bitcoin. I don't, I don't actively trade Bitcoin as such. It's uh, like I say, it's a cash position. I'm just sitting on it. Um, <clears throat> dollar yen, looking for this, uh, looking for a wave five to complete here through these prior highs at the uh, 109.80 level into this ascending trend line resistance monthly R3. So any move up into 110 here, um, I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns, especially if we can get this momentum, di uh, momentum divergence in play down here. Um, and I think then we could see a, a more sustained correction in terms of the dollar yen. So uh, that's the key area to be watching this late 109, 110, and watch those bearish reversal patterns to do something on the short side. Swissy, similar type of setup, really. Um, if we just extend that higher, what, we, what I'd look for in the Swissy now is a move up into this 1904.30, uh, 94.50 area and, uh, and watch for that, watch for price to fade there as we complete an interim wave five. And then we should see at least a pullback to, uh, to test 92.50 again as support would be the uh, the initial target zone if we can get some bearish reversal pattern up there. I did actually have a long trade running in the Swissy, but uh, got stopped out uh, yesterday for break even. And the dollar CAD, I think uh, once again, the dollar CAD appears at the moment anyway, to be struggling with this uh, descending trend line, struggling to really get closes above it. We had a few attempts uh, in previous weeks, but we failed. And yesterday we tried again, rolled over, seeing a bit of support at the moment, but ultimately I'm looking for another leg lower in the dollar CAD. The price, the ultimate target for the big corrective pattern on the weekly charts is 120.40. And then I think from there, we could see a more sustained correction in the dollar CAD. Uh, Euro is the one position I'm currently running at the moment. I'm short the Euro uh, from 118.30. Um, we've had a Quick look down there at weekly range supports and uh, and we're holding at the moment, so that's 117.85. I think we could see a correction here, uh, a bit of a pullback into, uh, to test this 119 as resistance. But ultimately now what I'm looking for with the Euro, certainly as we trade below 120, is that we ultimately now test the yearly pivot at 117.20. From there, I think we could uh, we could will have washed out enough of the um, enough of the positioning in the euro market, which is very crowded on the long side, to uh, to ultimately see prices then potentially trade higher. We've also I, I posted this earlier as a chart, but I'll just uh, update this chart now. We've also got this big uh, this major trend line support as well coming in um, right at that uh, at that yearly pivot there. Um, or just below the yearly pivot. So uh, that's certainly a uh, going to be an area of interest for me as we get this, uh, as we potentially test into um, this zone, uh, watch for those watch for bullish reversal patterns there. And I think that's going to be a, uh, a decent opportunity on the long side. Equally, if we get back up here into this 119, watch on the four hour, the intraday charts, if we, if this, if we correct here in a three wave pattern into 119, I think there's an opportunity to reshort the euro uh, to play for this uh, this test down into the 117 zone. Like I said, that's the only position I've got running at the moment and it's risk-free. Euro-Yen <coughs> has, uh, has pulled back. 
What I'd ideally like to see here with the Euro Yen is, um, is for us to test into this uh, trend line support here. And then I think we can set uh, base for the next leg higher in terms of the Euro Yen. And ultimately I'm looking for a move up into 132 here, uh, the ascending trend line resistance. So whilst we trade below the five period VWAP here coming in at 129.06, I think we should grind down and get a, ultimately get a test of 127.50. Um, that's going to, I think, provide a, a, an interesting opportunity on the long side to, uh, to trade for the next leg higher in terms of the euro yen. Euro Swiss, uh, this, I, I had uh, an order, I've still got the order on, I think, um, but we're holding this uh, descending trend line resistance. What I was looking for was this for, to have completed an ABC pattern here and for us to have a C low in place and ultimately trade through, um, my, my order is 110.85. So I'm looking for a move through uh, this descending trend line resistance, which will pull me in at 110.85. And, um, and then I'm looking for a test up into the, uh, the ascending trend line resistance coming in around uh, 111.85 in terms of the Euro Swiss. But like I say, it hasn't been triggered yet. And it looks like we're gonna do a bit more back and filling here. Um, but that's the technical pattern that I'm tracking in terms of the Euro Swiss. Euro sterling, um, this one just cannot uh, cannot find its feet. And whilst we hold uh, 87.29 as resistance, and I think we've potentially got a wave four high in place there, and we should see a wave five uh, complete into 84.45, potentially going to roll over here today. If we get a, a bearish close, this could be an opportunity um, on the close this evening for me and my strategy, uh, how I enter the trades, um, to target this wave or low. Let me just draw in the, uh, the pattern so you can track exactly what it is I'm looking at. So we have one, I call this two, three, four, and then the fifth wave is an equality objective, uh, initially an equality objective versus that wave one there. So uh, we'll see how this, uh, this closes this evening, but I think we can get a grind down into this 84.45 before uh, looking then for a corrective move uh, equal to this leg here. Oops, let's get that. So this is the type of pattern I would envisage. And then, uh, and then another leg to the downside to follow um, is what I'd be looking for there in terms of Euro sterling. Euro Aussie, uh, this one was frustrating. I had, uh, had a couple of goes at this um, on the short side from setups in this area. Um, we eventually tested in, put in a double bottom, and now we're back into a potential double top here, still trading below the wave four high here. And whilst we do, 149.94 is the downside objective here to complete this cycle. Um, so we'll see if we get some bearish reversal patterns here, take out the five period BWAP on a closing basis. And I will once again look at uh, short positions in the Euro Aussie, uh, targeting that wave five low um, is, uh, is the game plan with the Euro Aussie. Sterling Aussie breaking out here out of the triangle and, um, and setting up, oh sorry, the trend line resistance, setting up a test of 183. Um, so if we get a bullish inside close here, there's, uh, there could be an opportunity on the long side uh, through, certainly get a, a move up then. I would anticipate to test weekly range resistance, 81.22, maybe we pull back from there and we test the trend line from above. And that would be the premium entry because we've also got this uh, trend line support here. So if we've got a move back in that, that basically tests, um, tests the apex here, of the triangle, then there could be a great opportunity on the long side to trade up for this equality objective versus this swing low here. Sterling took out the trend line. Uh, I was watching the uh, for a potential support to develop there. We didn't uh, we didn't really get it, um, but we could snap back here. We'd need to close back through the VWAP uh, to get constructive, and then that could complete a three wave pattern and uh, and set the base for the next leg higher in terms of sterling. But my sense is now, because we have versus this uh, 140.04 swing high here, we have an equality objective of 135.40. So I think we'll, we should potentially grind it out here to test this 135.40 and then have uh, an ABC complete, um, corrective pattern complete here. Let me just draw that in for you. So A, B, and our C low here. And then we can think about the next leg of upside in terms of sterling. 
Sterling yen is sitting right at trendline support, and uh, and this could give me a signal this evening on uh, on the long side here, in terms of the uh, sterling uh, sterling yen at the trendline support, bullish outside reversal. Need to clip or close right at one forty nine ninety four, and then uh, then I'd be looking to play this on the long side. We've tested this symmetry swing support, trendline support and uh, I'm potentially going to get a bullish reversal here and we're positively orientated in terms of the monthly um, volume waste average price which I use to define the overall uh, current trend in the market and so if I can get a confirmation then on the shorter term um, volume waste average price then I'll be looking on the long side and looking for us to exceed the prior highs at 152.56 and uh, potentially head up into the top side of the trend channel. Sterling Swiss is a similar type of pattern here. We, didn't, we haven't quite got into the trendline support. So I've been looking for the Sterling Swiss to make a test of the trendline support and then set, uh, and then have that wave four low in place. And then we can trade for the wave five extension higher in terms of Sterling Swiss. Got a bit, bit more room to go. So I'm level I'm at 127.20 is where I'd, uh, I'd like to see us test in terms of Sterling Swiss. Sterling Kiwi. Watch now for, this is going to be a big test for Sterling Kiwi, 198.25. We just pierced through those prior highs. And I think that's going to be uh, a profit taking zone for this uh, Sterling Kiwi. And what I'd be watching for are bearish reversal patterns set short positions there. A couple of targets that I'd be, uh, be tracking would be one, this trend, uh, trend channel that we've been trading in. So looking for that trend line support test coming in around uh, 92, the 192 level. And then from there, we could have a major inverse head and shoulders pattern developing and, uh, and we could put in a quite a significant base potentially in, uh, in Sterling Kiwi over the coming weeks, maybe months. Uh, Aussie. So again, well, the similar story really to uh, the corrective patterns that I just identified in terms of uh, copper. So I'm, whilst we hold uh, 78.48 as a high here, I'm looking for the Aussie to test the equality objective, 74.58, and then I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns as we'd have a potential wave four low in place. And I'd like to then look to position myself to trade uh, for the wave five extension uh, to trade back through the prior highs at the 80 level in terms of Aussie, Aussie yen, I, uh, this was one I had last week on the short side. I took uh, just under 100 pips out of this Aussie yen. Um, what I'm looking for now is just to try and find a base here and get a, another leg higher before uh, to complete what will give us a nice divergence pattern, triple divergence there. If it sets up, I think that's going to be an opportunity on the short side. Um, looking for a close uh, through 83.44 area. Um, would give a, a trigger on the long side to trade up for that 86 target. Kiwi, um, looking now for 69.02, which is the equality objective versus 72.70. Watch for bullish reversal patterns in this area to set long positions, because again, what I anticipate is that that would be a uh, wave four low in place and we can trade for a wave five extension up through those prior highs at 74.60. Kiwi yen, um, looking for a little bit lower here in terms of the Kiwi yen. Uh, get a test here, monthly range support, 74.90s, and the third test of the trend line that should attract so at least profit taking, if not uh, fresh demand in the market. And again, what I'd be looking for would be a low in place and ultimately a retest then at 79.13 and potentially take that out as we move uh, for a potential wave five extension to the upsides. Cad Yen, similar story here, looking for a test of the trend line before uh, doing anything on the long side. We haven't quite got that yet, but uh, keep an eye on 85.70, weekly range for 85.50. And last but not least, Cad Swiss, looking for this to extend into uh, 75.20, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns with divergence to set short positions targeting a trend line test at the 73 level. So that's, uh, those are the charts. I'm, uh, I'm looking at a bit of a whistle stop tour today, but um, I see ample, ample opportunity uh, in and around current levels. Um, and 
we will see if we can get some price action confirmations and, uh, and get some positions on the books. Any questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, um, if you type an N in the chat box, so I know that, uh, that we're all on the same page and I've managed to, uh, to make a, a decent job of, uh, of explaining the charts and the views. Okay, good stuff. Um, as there aren't any questions, I'll wrap this one up here and we will reconvene at, uh, at the same time next week. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a great weekend.